the cell cycle the cell cycle is the overall process of cell growth and division and is generally divided into four uh, sort of phases the first three make up the large uh, phase called interphase and those first three phases of interphase uh, G1 which stands for gap or growth uh, phase one it's where the cell is really doing most of its growth, uh, making a lot of its organelles, synthesizing all of its biomolecules, and getting ready for the next phase, which is F, uh, where the DNA is replicated. And that's where the name S comes from, DNA synthesis. And then that is followed by a second shorter gap phase called G2, where the cell sort of checks over the DNA which was made in S phase and gets ready for the actual cell division phase which is uh, the mitotic or M phase which is made up of mitosis and cytokinesis and at the end of that we have two daughter cells which then return back into G1. The first part of this will go over uh, the events of mitosis and cytokinesis and then we will come back and look at interphase mainly paying attention to the regulation of the cell moving through the stages of interphase. The events of mitosis shown here uh, I am not too concerned about knowing the exact names of the phases in fact the uh, as you may have noticed, the names of the phases are not even on the slide here. Uh, I am more concerned with you knowing the events that occur and sort of a rough idea of the order of those events. So we start with a cell here um, in late interphase, so probably right around the end of G2. Uh, we can tell that because it says here that the chromatin is duplicated. So that means that the cell has already gone through S phase and the DNA has all been copied. Uh, make sure that you keep all of these terms straight. Uh, the, for example, the difference between chromatin and a chromosome. A chromosome is a condensed version of DNA where chromatin is sort of loose all throughout the nucleus. Uh, other words which are very easy to confuse, uh, centrosome and centromere. Uh, very similar terms. Um, and we'll also come across the term chromatid, which is not really on here anywhere, but that is a chromatid is one half of a duplicated chromosome. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. So some events that happen sort of in order, uh, the centrosomes here sort of move to opposite sides of the nucleus and start to form the mitotic spindle. These are microtubules which, uh, which attach and move around the nucleus. Uh, as I already said, the chromosomes begin to, the, well, the, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes, and we begin to be able to see it. And the nuclear envelope uh, will begin to break down and will eventually completely disappear around the same time that the two centrosomes I have completely moved to opposite sides of the cell and the mitotic spindle is completely formed and the spindle attaches to each of the chromosomes and sort of aligns these chromosomes up along the center, a, an imaginary center line of the cell, sometimes referred to as the metaphase plate. As soon as all those chromosomes get lined up, the spindle uh, fibers shorten and that pulls them apart. So each cell is getting one half of this duplicated chromosome. So they each cell is getting a full uh, genetic complement. And then cytokinesis begins to occur. And that you can see that starting to form here with the cleavage furrow forming. And then everything sort of comes back. The nuclear membrane begins to reform and we are left with only one centrosome. And what that looks like in sort of a live video here 
you can see the chromosomes condensing here in the middle of the cell. And they sort of, uh, as the spindle fibers, which you can't see at this magnification level, you can kind of see them beginning to form out here a little bit. Uh, but you can't really see this, the fibers themselves. Uh, they start to attach to the chromosomes, and the chromosomes kind of slowly make their way into the center of the cell. There's a few stragglers down here. But it happens relatively quick. As soon as all the chromosomes line up, let's see, waiting for this one, and there we go, they move apart. Uh, to opposite sides, the chromosomes decondense back into the chromatin and the cell divides into two. And now we have the two uh, daughter cells back into uh, interphase. Uh, cleavage furrow here, this is cytokinesis in animal cells. That uh, cleavage occurs through this uh, contraction of this ring of microfilaments which just kind of squeeze the cell in half until it physically breaks into two. Uh, in plant cells, this occurs slightly differently. Just remember, plant cells have a cell wall, so you can't just squeeze them and have them break into two. Uh, they have to form a new cell wall between the, the two daughter cells, and that is formed by these vesicles kind of lining up in the center here and forming what's called this uh, cell plate, which is just an early cell wall which uh, then fuses with the existing cell wall and divides the new cell into the two daughter cells. So that is our very quick review of mitosis. Make sure you go back and look at all those steps and all of those uh, vocabulary terms as it can get quite confusing. So looking at the cell cycle itself, uh, how is this regulated? We don't want cells just dividing whenever they want to. There are a few uh, checkpoints, they're called, within the cell cycle. So if you envision this cell sort of as a, as a clock going around clockwise through G1 and S and G2 and then to M phase, there's a couple spots, actually three spots here where there are major checkpoints, where the cell has to complete certain tasks or have certain tax, tasks done correctly in order to move on. Uh, one here at G2 before uh, the cell moves into M phase, making sure that every, all the, the DNA has been correctly duplicated and everything is ready. Uh, the M phase or M checkpoint here uh, has to do with the, the chromosomes pulling apart correctly. But the major checkpoint is this one, this late G1 checkpoint, often called the R point or restriction point. Because once a cell gets through this R point, it's pretty much going to make it all the way around and com successfully complete the cell cycle through S, G2, and M and go back into G1 as two new daughter cells. So this G1 checkpoint is the major checkpoint of the cell cycle. These checkpoints work by a, uh, the, well the main mechanism that, that they work is the action of these molecules here, CDKs or cyclin dependent kinases. And hopefully we at this point know what a kinase is. It's, I remember it's an enzyme which adds phosphate groups to proteins, it phosphorylates proteins. And these are called the cyclin-dependent kinases because their activity is regulated by the proteins, uh, the presence of these proteins called cyclins. And as their name implies, these cyclins, uh, their expression level goes up and down throughout the cell cycle. So this uh, particular one is showing uh, the control of the G2 checkpoint. The CDK this protein is present all throughout the cell cycle, but for most of it, through all of this, it is held in an inactive state because it does not have its cyclin partner. But moving through late S and into G2, the cyclin begins to be expressed. It binds with its CDK and becomes an active kinase. Uh, here it's called MPF. And this is the original name before it was uh, before the CDK and cyclin components were purified and identified, it was called mitosis promoting factor because they knew if they added this to a cell, it would immediately go into mitosis. 
So this is the active form. And then after that checkpoint is passed, so it completes its task, the cyclone is broken down and the CDK returns to its inactive state. And there are a number of these cy cyclin CDK molecules uh, or kind of partners that function throughout the cell cycle. Uh, as I said, the restriction point, this is the major site of regulation, mainly, conf mainly controlled by the cyclin D and cyclin E pairs. I will not hold you responsible for knowing the exact CDK cyclin pairs that occur that function at each of these checkpoints. But I feel as though the book uh, sort of over oversimplifies this and kind of makes it wrong in saying that there's only one cyclin that uh, that happens here, or only one cyclin CDK partner that works here. There are cyclin CDK partners which work all around the cell cycle. And one other thing which is coming up on this slide, which is not on the other slides, is this uh, G0 idea. Uh, this is a G0 represents cells which have exited the cell cycle and are no longer actively dividing. Uh, these cells are still alive. Uh, in fact, most of the cells in your body are in G0. Uh, these cells are not dividing. They are just simply doing their job. If, there's a, if they are a muscle cell, they are actively contracting. If they are a nerve cell, they are conducting the nerve impulses. They are not going through the cell cycle. Uh, but you can see that since this G0 kind of loops back, it is possible for cells to, re to go from G0 back into the cell cycle. So just one final thought about why this cell cycle regulation is so important. And that is if when it goes wrong and we have unregulated growth, that leads to a tumor. Okay, and all of these control mechanisms, uh, there's many places for the control to misfire. And we will talk more about cancer uh, in a few of the in a few later chapters in the genetics chapters. But this is kind of gives the overview of cancer spread and the kind of the route of the disease. Um, a early tumor begins to grow and it really doesn't it becomes a big problem around this stage when the cells begin to break off and move to other parts of the body. Okay, so that is uh, the review of the cell cycle. Remember, look at the stages and make sure you have all those vocabulary terms straight.